There are 28 days until Election Day. And last night, CBS aired its 60 Minutes interview with Kamala Harris. Now, the program has interviewed the candidates in every presidential election dating back to 1968. But Donald Trump backed out this year. And before airing the interview with Vice President Harris, 60 Minutes began with a note about Trump. Here's part of that explanation. It's been a tradition for more than half a century that the major party candidates for president sit down with 60 Minutes in October. In 1968, it was Richard Nixon and Hubert Humphrey. This year, Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump accepted our invitation. But unfortunately, last week, Trump canceled. The campaign offered shifting explanations. First, it complained that we would fact check the interview. We fact check every story. Later, Trump said he needed an apology for his interview in 2020. Trump claims correspondent Leslie Stahl said in that interview that Hunter Biden's controversial laptop came from Russia. She never said that. Trump has said his opponent doesn't do interviews because she can't handle them. He had previously declined another debate with Harris. So tonight may have been the largest audience for the candidates between now and Election Day. Wow. You, you know, I, I, I've got to ask Jonathan Lemire. Um, well, before I ask, just I think it's fascinating. I being fact checked. I, I love when people fact check me. I, I really do. I love if I make a mistake. I want to know what I said that was wrong. People can disagree with me. Opinions are one thing, uh, but I want to be fact checked. If I if I say something wrong, I want to know that. I, I like most adults that I know are the same way. The fact that Donald Trump and and his vice presidential nominee are so horrified at the prospect of being fact checked suggests. Well, it, it's the tell that they're, they're still lying mm -hmm. this week about the 2020 election. They're lying in a way that's very destructive for the people of North Carolina and South Carolina about hurricane relief in a way that's getting in the way uh, and in a way that that Republican governors are pushing back against them on. They're lying about dogs and cats being eaten in Ohio when the Republican governor there is saying that's a lie as well. The lies continue over and over again. But he doesn't go on because of the fact check, mm -hmm. right? Why are they scared of fact check? Because they lie all the time and you literally can see every day them lying on the campaign trail. Then he says he doesn't go on for an apology he wants an apology from Leslie Stahl for something that never even happened. Again, deranged, disconnected, deluded, whatever you want to call it, or maybe just scared. And then finally, he says, Kamala Harris, this is really bizarre. I can't sit down on interviews because she doesn't know the issues. Again, as Hyland always says, it's either confession or projection. Mm -hmm. Here, Donald Trump is the one who skipped the 60 Minutes interview, first time in 50 years a candidate has done that, and is the one that refused to do a debate, even on Fox News, even on Fox News, who many hosts on that network are echoing Donald Trump's disinformation. They can't do a real interview. And there's actually and one of debate. their most popular hosts suggests that civil war is better than, than voting and, and, and that they need to move past voting. And yet she's willing to debate him there and he refuses to do it. So last night as I was watching this, I, I started asking John, like, what's going on, man? Like, what? That, I, I've heard from people inside his campaign, I know you have too, though they're very careful, a real frustration that they have no idea what this is guy is going to do. He doesn't do the things he can't, should do to win, and they can't control him at all. What are you hearing? Is there an understanding on his part that he is no longer up to sitting for serious interviews where people challenge him? I, uh, is he is is his age, as Peter Baker wrote in the New York Times yesterday, really preventing him? 
from doing serious interviews, uh, uh, the debate, not doing the debate. I'm really, I'm dumbfounded because this is just not the behavior of somebody who wants to win an election. No. So two things here. First of all, Vice President Harris did receive criticism, as we well know, in recent weeks for not doing many interviews. And look, some Democrats are really anxious, saying, look, she needs to do more. That is now changing. She sat for 60 Minutes. That aired last night. Today, she's with The View, Howard Stern, Stephen Colbert. She did a popular podcast over the weekend. She's really ramping up her own media appearances. And again, she's been consistent, saying, hey, I want a second debate with Donald Trump. Trump is the one who said no to the debate, and Trump is the one who said no to 60 Minutes. And there are a couple of things at play here. First of all, we heard J.D. Vance, as you alluded to, in the vice presidential debate, being upset, saying to moderators, wait, I thought you weren't going to fact check me when they did, even modestly, because he was lying about something. And of course, now Trump did not want to submit himself to the fact checking last night. And this is something his, his aides have grown more and more frustrated with their inability to steer him. And I know people watch this will say, well, no one can ever control Donald Trump. And that's largely true. But there were moments earlier in this campaign where Susie Wiles, Chris Lasavita, the longtime Republican operatives who were running the campaign, were able to instill at least some sort of messaging through Trump. This is what we want to talk about this election. Now, it was much more effective when their opponent was President Biden than it is Vice President Harris. But even that is now gone. Trump just says whatever he wants. He only sits for friendly interviews. They ask him. I was talking to a Republican over the weekend saying if he would just talk about the economy every day. And even though the metrics are still good, but a lot of Americans don't feel it. They're like, if he would just talk about the economy every day, we'd win. But he can't, Willie. He can't and he won't. He wants to relitigate past grievances with Leslie Stahl. He wants to say you know, racist things about migrants. He wants to just fight and they can't keep him on message. And right now, there's a refusal for him to be challenged whatsoever, both in interviews and I'm told, and I think Joe's heard this as well, even by his aides. He simply won't listen to him anymore. He does only what he wants to do.